Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I wanted to share with you my experience with OHSS, which is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which in my case was a complication from IVF. And I'm also gonna do like a fall get ready with me with current products that I've been loving for the fall. But first, if you haven't already, I'm gonna link up above my part one to this video, which will kind of lead into this part two. So if you haven't, already watched that, I would highly recommend you watch that so that you're not wondering what I'm talking about or getting lost during this one. But before we get started, I just wanted to show you the makeup look in natural lighting. The lighting that I have in front of my vanity is backlit and I just move so I don't have my regular lighting set up yet. So I'm gonna walk you through this look and share my experience on OHSS. So let's get started. So the very next morning after I filmed the last video on my experience with IVF, today I want to do something a little bit more full coverage. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear and this is in the shade Creamy Vanilla. And then I'm going to mix in like two drops of the Urban Decay Drop Shop just so it's not super matte and so I can kind of easily blend it together. I'm just gonna mix like two drops like that. So um, the next morning after I had filmed that video, I filmed that video on a Sunday and the very next morning was a Monday morning. So I woke up at like six o'clock. I popped up and I just was like kind of feeling like a little dizzy, like wasn't feeling right. Didn't know what it was, but I was just like, mm, I don't really feel good. But you know, I, I was just like, all right, let me get up and go to the bathroom or whatever. So I get up and my stomach at this point is ginormous. So what you saw on the last video, it ended up getting worse. If I can find a picture, I'll insert it right here. But I was up another, I would say like five pounds or so overnight. So I woke up, went to the bathroom, and when I stood up from uh, sitting down on the toilet, I just wasn't feeling right. I don't know if you've ever gotten like lightheaded, but you just know like, wow, okay, I need to sit down. It was beyond that. It was to the point where I was, I felt myself losing consciousness and I could not control my mind. I could not control my body. And my husband at this point was still sleeping. And I just remember yelling to him, something's not right, something's not right. Call 911, something's not right. And literally, I just remember waking up on the floor and I was profusely vomiting. The ambulance shows up and um, laying on the floor, profusely vomiting still and I just kind of didn't really remember what had happened. Um, my blood pressure was super, super low. It was well under 90 over 60. I don't remember what it was exactly, but it was super low. And they got me to the hospital. Oh, I really like the way this foundation pairs with the Urban Decay Drop Shot. It's really, really nice. I just hope that it stays in place. So anyway, they got me to the hospital. They got me set up with some fluids, which I desperately needed. I was severely dehydrated. And because I was so dehydrated, that's why I ended up passing out. My electrolytes were all out of whack. And what was happening is because my ovaries were so swollen and filled with fluid and then the blood vessels were leaking, I was having fluid leaking into like my third spacing around my abdomen. Hence the reason why any liquids I was taking in was going to the third spacing and I wasn't really getting anything in my vascular system. And I was drinking a lot. I remember after I had the egg retrieval, I was pounding Gatorade, I was drinking smart water, I was doing everything that they told me to do. This just happened to be like a very rare complication. Um, I've heard of people getting ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, but I think only a small percentage get it to the point where they need to be hospitalized. Um, it's either that or people just don't talk about it or the doctors just don't admit that it happens. I do know a couple people that have gone through this process and they were fine. Maybe they had a little bit of swelling, but nothing major. So quickly moving on, I'm going to be using Tarte Shape Tape as concealer under my under eyes. I feel like I need a little bit extra today. I'm a little bit tired. 
So after I got um, the IV, I definitely started feeling better. However, I was very uncomfortable. My stomach, it hurt to breathe. I felt shortness of breath. I, I just couldn't get comfortable. Um, like I said in my last video, I was not that uncomfortable when I was nine months pregnant. So to gain another five pounds of fluid overnight, it obviously just made matters a lot worse. And I was just so uncomfortable to the point that I just wanted it to go away. I just remember just crying. And then of course you read all these things about what else could happen, other complications like ovarian torsion and throwing a blood clot. And of course, because of all of that, and because I'm naturally like a very anxious overthinker, I started working myself up and I started thinking the worst. I'm just gonna set this concealer down and this makeup down. My face is a little bit tacky from the oil, but I'm hoping if I just set down with the powder that that will kind of go away a little bit. So we'll see. And this is just the NYX and I use this all the time. It's in the banana shade. It's the HD finishing powder. It is so cheap and it works just as well as like the higher end stuff. I just don't see the need in you know, spending money on the higher end stuff. You can find a drugstore alternative that works just as well. So for every day, I just tend to gravitate towards this one because I think it gets the job done pretty well. So what was crazy is when I went to the hospital, it was a hospital that according to my doctor didn't specialize in OHSS and they didn't, I guess it's something that is not too familiar doctors ER doctors, they don't hear of it much. They don't have patients that come in with it much. Um, this is just what I've been told. This was my experience. So that's all I can really comment on. So when I first went in, the ER doctor took an ultrasound to my abdomen and he told me that he thought that I had blood, that I was bleeding internally. And he also said that I was pregnant which of course I knew that I wasn't pregnant. It was because of the HCG trigger shot that I had done for my egg retrieval that was still in my system. So of course it was coming up as a positive pregnancy test. As far as the bleeding in my stomach, I had a feeling it was just, you know, my ovaries and the fluid that they were releasing. Um, but I was definitely a little bit freaked out. And I said to him, listen, you know, I just had the egg retrieval done. I was trying to explain things. And I just suggested that, you know, he really needed to get in touch with my reproductive endocrinologist who could probably guide him on what was really going on here and, you know, not treating me based on what he sees typically in the ER with traumas and things and, you know, this and that. So after he consulted with my reproductive endocrinologist who let him know that no, that's not what's going on. She has ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and what you're seeing in there is not blood. It's just fluid from her ovaries and just the blood vessels leaking into her third spacing. So he of course came over and apologized and he said, you know, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. I, this is the first time I'd ever seen this. So when my husband and I called our doctor and let him know, like, listen, I called 911 this morning, Heather fell to the floor and was, you know, on her back puking and it got really scary. He said, well, why did you take her to, you know, I'm not gonna say the name of the hospital, but he basically said, why did you take her to that hospital? You should have taken her to this hospital. And he said, well, you know, it was six o'clock in the morning and my wife passes out and falls on the floor and is unconscious. Like, sorry, I called 911. I didn't know what to do, you know? Um, any normal person in their right mind would have just said, have the ambulance come and take her to the nearest hospital or, or whatever. So that kind of rubbed me and him the wrong way. It was almost like it was an inconvenience for him that he would have to go and drive to that hospital. And I get it, that hospital is maybe not well versed in this particular syndrome. And you know, the other hospitals is where he sends his patients that have this kind of complication. But I just felt like he shouldn't have kind of came at us like, 
well, why did you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Instead of saying like, well, is she okay? And acting concerned. That definitely threw up a flag for me and definitely rubbed me the wrong way. It just made me think like, okay, this is just a money game. He really doesn't care about his patients. Let me think, which blush do I wanna use? I'm gonna do a little bit of MAC Melba and a little bit of Milani Luminoso from the drugstore and just kind of mix both of those together. Cause I'm going for like a fall look today. I kind of want to do something more like autumn-y. So um, my doctor ended up coming to the hospital to like assess the situation there. And you know, they did blood work. They wanted to make sure that my blood looked good, that everything was functioning properly. They wanted to see if there was any infection, you know, that kind of thing. So they did do their due diligence there. And he, he just said, you know, he said it again. He goes, well, make sure if this happens again or if she's not feeling good again, make sure you take her to X, Y, and Z hospital. Don't take her here because they don't know what they're doing here. And then he told me during that same visit that only 0.5% of his patients are hospitalized for this. Later on, he told me that it happens more often than that. So I'm kind of like, hmm, like, I, I don't know what to believe anymore. It was almost like he was brushing it off like, oh yeah, well, unfortunately you're in the 0.5% that this happens to. And listen, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I didn't know there was a risk. I did know there was a risk. When I entered into this process willingly, I you know, went through the list of things that could happen and it is a risk, but it was never like there is a, I didn't think that it would happen to me. Nobody does, you know? Um, the benefits outweigh the risk, but I just feel like when you're in that situation and unfortunately I was, I could have used a little bit more support and hand holding and a little bit more transparency from the doctor where I felt comfortable and I didn't feel so scared and alone and like I didn't know what to expect moving forward. I felt like I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants. So for highlight, I think that I'm gonna do like a cream with like a powder over it. I'm gonna do ColourPop Wisp. Sorry, I'm kind of like back and forth because it's hard to multitask right now. My mind's kind of all over the place. Put a little bit of the wisp down the bridge of my nose. And then I take these two fingers and I just kind of pat it out. I like this powder. It's like the ColourPop, like the powder cream. I guess it's more of like a cream. With the warmth of your fingers and you just press it into your skin, it just looks very natural. And it doesn't look like so powdery. I really like it. I am just gonna dust some champagne pop on top of that. I've been really liking mixing the cream with the powder highlights. Kind of just get the best of both worlds. Just do a little bit down the front of my nose and then just on the cheekbones. Which just stepped it up a notch. Look at that. Something about doing your makeup when you're just not feeling your best. I just like to do my makeup and my nails and I'll just kind of force myself to walk or, or do something productive and it can just really help with your mood if you're struggling. So anyway, back in the hospital, got some fluids, talked to the doctor, he assured me everything was gonna be okay, I was just dehydrated, that I need to drink like, you know like those big gulps that you get from 7-Eleven? He's like, you need to be drinking like six of those a day. Something with electrolytes. So I opted for the essential water, the smart water, or I would drink like G2 Gatorade and then just regular plain water. I was doing everything that he said to do to kind of you know alleviate my symptoms and make this go away. The one thing that I couldn't do was I couldn't have my embryo transfer because of the severity of the OHSS if they were to transfer an embryo and I became pregnant. Your body naturally releases the HCG hormone and that would just exacerbate the whole situation. So we didn't do that. So luckily I had embryos that were good enough to freeze and they were healthy. So I'm so grateful because we have eight healthy embryos. About half of them are boys and half of them are girls. So anyway, that whole thing is done. And I'm really grateful that we were able to freeze them so that cycle wasn't a waste. So what they suggested that I do at the hospital. And if any of you are going through this right now, I just want to kind of touch on it. 
So the doctor sent me, he, he said, you know, I know you're uncomfortable. I think that if you get tapped, which is a paracentesis, and they take um, a shot of lidocaine and they did it in my abdominal cavity. Um, I had it done three times. The first time I had it done right here on my side in my third spacing. So they sent me down to the radiology department, the interventional radiologist does it, and they shoot you with a little bit of lidocaine to numb the area up really, really well. Um, that just feels like, I mean, to me, I guess it kind of feels like almost like a bee sting without that after effect of that burning that you get if you get stung by a bee. But it's not bad at all, like it's just a quick kind of sting. And then they take like a scalpel, just to kind of cut the skin a little bit, and then they take the needle and push the needle in, and then they put a catheter, and then they can enter your third spacing and drain the fluid out. So I had that done, and you're not put under or anything like that. I don't know if some places do, but I wasn't, I had it done three times, I wasn't put under any time. So I guess if you're not good with like needles or blood or that kind of thing, it might be difficult, but it was, I was so uncomfortable that I was just like, please, like just, just, you know, they joked, they said, you know, when we're done here, you're going to come back a thin woman. Um, but okay. So today, just going back to what I'm using, I'm using the Kylie Blue Honey Palette and I am going in with this shade right down here and I'm gonna use that as my transition shade in my crease. So they drained, I wanna say like 1.7 liters, which if you think of a soda bottle, like think of like a Coca-Cola soda bottle, it was like almost the size of that. I felt better after, I didn't feel like they got everything, which they said we're not gonna be able to get everything, but I definitely felt a little bit better. So that was done, went back, stayed overnight in the hospital for monitoring, continued to get fluids. I think he was pushing something like one to two liters per hour. It was a lot of fluids. I was just swollen. I mean, way worse than after I had my daughter, um, I was super swollen because I was pumped with the Pitocin. It was just, like just swollen with fluids, not, not a fun experience, but they just wanted to make sure that I wasn't dehydrated. So I'm just doing the same thing on the other side with the same shade, just working that into the transition and I do windshield wiper motions like this and then I just do little circles and then I concentrate on making like a V on that outer corner, just making sure that it complements my eye shape and just get it nice and blended. So the next morning I felt okay, but I felt like a lot of the fluid had just reaccumulated. And you know, I knew that was gonna happen because he told me, you know, you're gonna have another few days of this. You're gonna have another week of this. Um, we just don't know. What, what needed to happen is the HCG needs to get out of the system because when it's in the system, it's gonna continue to stimulate the ovaries. And that's what was happening. And it, uh, the more they were getting stimulated, they would just fill up with fluid and leak. So my body just needed to heal. It just needed to get back to a baseline. I was feeling a little bit better and I was like, okay, I know what to do here. I'm gonna pound water. I was feeling like, okay, that's gonna be the end of it. That's, we're done. So I was discharged and I was sent home Tuesday night and I was not feeling good again. I was feeling faint, I was feeling nauseous. My bowels were moving, everything was crazy. I just was not feeling right. Like in hindsight, I wish that they just kept me overnight again, um, but because I was in that hospital, um, the doctor wanted me to go because then that would mean he would need to come back or he'd have to transfer me to, I guess, the, the hospital that he wanted me to be at. Then, so Tuesday night was not feeling right, you know, felt very faint a couple of times. So I ended up calling the doctor and it was the doctor's partner that was on call. And I spoke to that doctor. I said what was going on and they said, okay, I will get you on the schedule tomorrow. You can come in, we can check you out, that kind of thing. It might make you feel a little bit better. So that was Wednesday, went back to the doctor and I was all filled up again with fluid. I felt dehydrated. I was just not getting 
the fluids that I needed. I was not getting the electrolytes that I needed. I was throwing up. I had diarrhea. I was all just filled. My whole third spacing had filled up again. Before I move on, let me focus on what I'm doing next on my eyes so we don't get too crazy here. I'm gonna take a flat shader brush and I'm gonna go in with this very shiny gold and I'm going to coat that shade all over my lids. Little bit of fallout, brush it off later. So I went in and I saw the doctor, my doctor, not the one that I had spoke to the night before, my actual doctor. And he assured me that I was going to be fine. And I'm like, this is not fine. Losing consciousness, throwing up, having diarrhea all day long. That's not fine. Like something needs to happen here. Like this is not fine. I don't know. I don't know what his logic was. I, I just, I don't know. And I just said to him, listen, I'm not, this is not fine. And so he sent me to, um... He had called ahead and he sent me to a hospital that is used to, I guess, dealing with his, his patients and this situation. He's like, you know, we'll get your fluids, we'll get you drained again, and, you know, you'll be able to go home and you'll be fine. So, at this point, the shortness of breath and the, like, not being able to get a full breath was getting worse. So, my husband took me to the hospital, the one that he had called ahead and had me um, checked in at. And I got there and they were waiting for me and <clears throat> they took all my vitals. They had me set up on a fluid, on fluids. They wanted me to get X amount of liters before I could go and get drained. I think I'm gonna deepen up like in my crease area a little bit, just a tiny bit with this shade down here, just to add a little something. So I got to the hospital and I had never been to this hospital before, at least not for me. And I, I thought that the nurses were really good and the staff was really nice and friendly and helpful. And the ER doctor at first, I really liked this individual, but then at the end, I feel like the doctor had kind of spoke down to me and I just, I didn't like her tone at all. But she had kind of made it seem to me like this happens all the time. Whereas my doctor was like, oh no, this is very rare. This doesn't really happen a lot. Like, you know, unfortunately you're just one of the lucky ones. She made it seem like it's no big deal. This happens all the time. And I'm just kind of like, wait, what? Like, it was just so confusing. Um, I am gonna go in with, I think it's called Sweet Like Honey, the shade right up here with like a buffing, like a really fluffy buffing brush. And I'm just gonna go in and I am going to kind of buff out this area here because it looks a little bit harsh for what I wanna do. I'm just gonna kind of buff that out and add a little bit of a lighter shade. So I will say that the interventional radiology department at this hospital was fantastic and the doctor was fantastic. I would go back and use him and trust him. And I just thought he did a phenomenal job. So they sent me down to interventional radiology at this hospital and I was drained two times. And he, I thought he just like, I, there's barely a mark there where the one that I have on my side, I still have like a scar. And then the one that I have, he did lower down um, my abdomen. I think he was able to drain more fluid. He got about two liters out and I felt a million times better. It's like when it was all removed, I felt like, okay, I'm turning a quarter here. I didn't feel like it was gonna fill back up. Granted, it was, let's see, one, two, was it three days later? Okay, now I'm going to go in with the shade right here, which is called Raw for my brow bone. Just kind of blend all of that in there. Take my brow whiz. Just touch up these bad boys. So after I got drained twice there and I got fluids, I felt a lot better. But I feel like after I kind of questioned the doctor, the ER doctor there, when she said, oh no, like, you know, I have patients come in all the time and you know, they're, they're here and, and whatnot. I was just kind of like, I guess I was probing. Like, I'm not stupid, you know, I, I know what's going on. And 
I feel like she kind of was getting annoyed with me. She was kind of telling me that, you know, I could just go home and if I pass out, it's not that big of a deal. Just make sure I sit down and whatever. It's like if you're repeatedly passing out and losing consciousness and you're throwing up and your blood pressure is dropping, like, no, like you need attention. I, I just, it, it was like when I first got there, she was like, oh, I can't even imagine like how scary this is with your stomach and, you know, whatever. And, and then it was like by the end of it, it was like she just made it seem like, oh, it's not a big deal if you pass out on the floor and you smack your head open. Like, what if my husband wasn't home that morning? What if I fell and I cracked my head open, then what? You know, I, I just don't get these doctors sometimes. Like fortunately he was home and he, he was able to help me, but what if he wasn't? And what if I smacked my head on the vanity? Like you don't know, you can't just tell people that it's normal. Like that's not normal. If you're passing out, there's an underlying reason why you're passing out. It's just not normal. So that kind of really rubbed me the wrong way towards the end. And then I'm just kind of like, what is this like a well-known thing that everyone's hush hush about? People aren't talking about it. I don't know. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm not trying to persuade anyone, anything, I'm not trying to scare anyone. I just want to put my truth out there. So people are more aware of what can happen. And I will say that if you're not feeling right and you are going through this, listen to your body and be annoying. Go to the hospital if you have to. Do whatever you need to do. Because if, if you're passing out and you're not feeling right and you're throwing up and your stomach's all swollen and you know, you're gonna get dehydrated. That's just what's gonna happen. And you're better off being playing it safe than sorry which I wish that I would have, when I filmed my last video, I was like, oh yeah, I went to the doctor, wasn't feeling right, feeling a little faint. And I'm like, I'm sure, you know, he told me it's fine. And then like, bam, that next morning, I pass out on the floor. Like I should have said, I should have pushed back more and said, no, this isn't right. I want to be monitored. You're not just going to send me home. So they sent me home and I was definitely nervous that first night because it was just a very overwhelming situation and I just, I wanted, um, like I know it could have been a lot worse and I, I knew it could get a lot worse and I was just trying to do everything the doctor said so that like my ovaries don't twist and whatever other complications that I could maybe get. Just gonna use a little L'Oreal. This is the Voluminous Primer. I swear by this stuff before I put my regular mascara on. I just think that it works so well and I always use it. I just really think that you can kind of get the most out of your lashes. So the next day I was definitely feeling better. Like I wasn't feeling 100% or even 75%. I'd say I was feeling maybe 60% better. Um, like I could already, I could tell because my stomach did not quickly fill up. Like this third spacing didn't fill up with fluid the way it did the last time. So I just felt like, okay, maybe things are starting to turn the corner. I just said, I'm just gonna drink a lot of water, just rest and it will get better and better each day. And it did, it did get better each day. It was very, obviously it's scary. I was scared to be alone. I didn't want to drive because I was still feeling faint at times. You don't want to be driving when you're feeling like you could pass out, obviously. You don't want to be alone feeling that way. I'm just going to stick to what I like for today. And I don't want to open up a new one. This is the Lash Paradise by L'Oreal that I always use. We're just going to get through what we have before we open anything new. So within, I'd say, three or four days, I was feeling a lot better. So timeline start to finish, I think it was probably like two weeks from my retrieval to when I was actually feeling better. I was feeling a complete world of difference after I got my period, I was feeling even better. So I would say if you are going through this, I think that if you're close to like two weeks out from it, you're probably, sorry, I'm trying to do my lower mascara and I gotta pay attention. If you're closer to, I just got mascara all over the place. Let me get my Q-tip. Clean this up a little bit here. 
So if you're closer to two weeks out from your egg retrieval, I think that things will start turning around for you. That was just how it was for me. I don't know if that's gonna be how it is for everyone. But, and another thing that I found that was weird is when I went to the hospital the second time or the third time, they didn't check my HCG level. And I asked them, I said, well, why aren't you checking it? And they said, well, because we know that it's, it's gonna show positive. Well, I wanna see what the level is. The doctor snapped at me and was like, well, why does it matter? It's gonna show that it's there. Why does it matter what the value is? It, 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 it'd be all different levels. It's like, it, I'm just asking the question, why are you snapping at me like you have something to hide? I just thought it was a little bit shady. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway. I had called the doctor's office to see when I could get in for the next steps, which would be the frozen embryo transfer. And the nurse was like, oh, okay, we're gonna start you on the pill now, but we don't have any openings until like January into February. Now, mind you, this was a month ago from when I'm filming this video today. So this was back in September. And I just thought it was unacceptable. Like, here we are, we've gone through all of this. I would have been able to have an embryo transfer, like a fresh one, if I didn't get so sick. And now you're telling me that you only have a certain amount of spots available. Why are you taking on new patients? Get through the ones that you have before you go ahead and you're scheduling all these new patients and then your patients that already got, you know, through their egg retrieval and they need a transfer, I feel like they should take priority a little bit. Um, and they kind of were just like, oh yeah, sorry, like your beat kind of thing, didn't care. And I said, you know what, I'm done. I didn't feel like I had the best experience here. I don't need to stay here. So I ended up taking my embryos while well, I'm in the process of it right now and going elsewhere where I can be treated with a little bit more respect and not just like I'm another number and just a dollar sign. So fortunately I was able to find a really great doctor and I'm excited and I'm just really happy that we do have the eight embryos. So hopefully we will be able to get the embryo transfer set up and get things moving. For the lips, I'm gonna be using Candy K by Kylie Cosmetics. And I've been in love with the velvet. So the matte one is a little drying, but the velvet is just awesome. And I just love it for this time of year. I've been using um, that with the gloss on top and I just think it's perfect for fall. Yeah, and I just think about like all the money we've spent and they wanna sit there and say, Oh, sorry, we can't fit you in. I just think that's unacceptable. I get they're backed up, but it's just the way she worded it. We only have a set amount of slots and it's like, oh, okay, so who decides who those slots go to? I don't know. I just thought she was rude about it. So if you're not happy with your doctor, you don't have to stay with them. You can find someone else who works better for you and your situation. And I would 100% encourage it. I'm going in with the velvet directly over it. And this stuff just smells so good. It smells like vanilla cupcakes. So I'm gonna let that dry down a minute. And I'm going to take my hair out. It's so hot in here, I swear, it's like 90 degrees. I've been loving this Amika Undone Texture Spray. It's awesome, I think it's like 15, $20 a bottle. I'm not sure, I'll link it down below. And everything that I used on my face today, I will link that down below too. Just gonna untwist them. Need a haircut desperately. And then just use some of this, get the texture. And I'm just going to set my face. I am going to do a little MAC Fix Plus Prep and Prime, and then I'm gonna hit it with the Urban Decay all night or after. Do a little bit of the Candy K gloss on top. So that's it on everything that I wanted to say about this topic today. And if you are going through this, I feel your pain and I hope that everything gets better soon for you. Just listen to your body. If you don't like what your doctor is saying, reach out, um, maybe go to another doctor, get another opinion. Listen to your body, listen to your gut. You're really the only one who knows how you're feeling. So just make sure to remember that. I hope that this video was helpful to someone out there. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.